Okay, so now let's put these tools to practice. Um, I'm going to do this with the Lab 0B, which was written very specifically for Visual Studio command line tools. Uh, we'll redo this here using these GNU-based tools. So I'm going to clone the repo. I'll grab the URL from GitHub. Since I have the GitHub uh, command line interface installed here, I'll do that. So I'm using gh repo cloned and then the name of the repo. However, I haven't logged in and authenticated myself yet, so I'm reminded to do so. So I'll do gh auth login. I'm going to do this via SSH. I'll have this tool generate a key for me. And then I'll log in with a browser and paste this code. Hitting enter here a couple times. I don't know, it took a while to uh, read what my enter key or something. It was kind of weird. See what's going on here. It doesn't seem to be prompting me for anything. Let me try to hit enter again. There we go. I'll try to paste that. Oops, looks like I didn't copy that code correctly. Try that again. There we go. Now I'll authorize GitHub to do these things and I'm all set. The device is registered. And now I can try to clone the repo again. First I'll make a place to store my files, my repos. Just create a folder called CSC232. I'll go in there and then I'll try to clone again. Now that I'm authenticated, this should happen without issue. And there we go. This has created a new folder called lab0b-jdane in my case. So I'll go in there with the CD, take a look at the contents. The lab actually instructs me to go into the source folder and do some things compiling-wise. So firstly, just note we've got a couple of source files here. And the CL equivalent from the lab in the Linux world is going to be G++. That's our C++ compiler. Yeah, it's kind of weird starting with a G, but uh, at any rate, there's it's called G++. It's the GNU C++ compiler. And I'll try to compile main.cpp. And like the lab demonstrates, the compiler doesn't know where the include file exists, so I'll add another switch, just like I did in the Windows lab, dash i. The only difference is the direction of the slash is different in Linux as opposed to Windows. And there you go. It's compiled. Notice that it created by default a file, an executable called a.out. And when I run it, of course, it doesn't find the text file that it's trying to read. So like in the lab, I'll copy that from the resource folder here, and then run it again. So the a.out is the equivalent of what CL was doing in creating lab or main.exe. So now I'm going to use the dash o switch to rename the executable. So instead of having it create a.out, it'll create lab0a, which should have been b, but oh well. And I run this now, and same old song and dance. Now I can do the same thing with the demo. 
give it a different target name. And there we go, we have a new target created. I run this new target. It's pretty much the same kind of executable as before. Now, um, let's go on, remove all these files that we created, and create our make file and do the next part of the lab. I use the text editor to create a make file and again that indentation needs to be done with the tab key and just running make like I did before except in the lab it used end make here we're using a program called simply make and this was used to create those uh, targets or that target and your assignment was to update that make file and add another target uh, for the demo. Now we'll move on to doing stuff with CMake. So we notice the version is 3.22.1, the minimum version. That's higher than actually what I have on my Ubuntu distribution is 3.16.3 so I'm going to have to edit that file first and make sure that it's no greater than what I have installed I'll use VI to do this VI is an interesting editor it operates in two modes command mode and um, interactive mode and so right now I'm in command mode and I'm deleting some characters and then I'll hit I to enter insert or interactive mode and I'll change the version to what I need it to be and then I'll hit escape and then colon and then W for writing those files to disk and then quit to quit and now I can just run CMake Notice I don't have a build directory. I'm going to have CMake create one for me. So I'm going to use dash s to specify where the location of the CMake text list file is. And then dash b to indicate where I want the build files to go. I want it to go in a directory called build. And then I'm going to use the Unix make files uh, generator to generate make files for me. And we see CMake gathering all the information it needs to be able to do its job. The build files have been written to that directory. So if we look now, we do in fact see a new directory called build. <coughs> and if I go in there, notice I have a make file. And that make file will be used with make to create our targets the targets that are specified in that CMake list text file. So I'm just running make. And it's building the different targets. Let's see which targets actually got created. And so we've got lab0b, lab0b hyphen demo, and lab0b hyphen tests. We use the compiler and make to generate those first two. The last one, lab0b dash tests, was a little more complicated to build, but CMake made it very easy, as you can see here. Well, CMake and make used together. 
And this is generally what we could use to run to check the progress of our assignments, to check the unit tests that I have.